So I disappeared from them and then I ran off the trail. As I left the trail, I dropped the marker on my iPhone because I'm still close enough to the city. I know you wouldn't believe it looking around here, but so close enough to the city that I have service. So I can find my way back to the trail if need be. Um, I'm going to go over these knots in other videos later. But um, this is a new way I found on YouTube. I forget who gets the credit for it, but oh well. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie a, uh, a figure eight except this one's a little more special. Um, it's almost like tying a slipped figure eight, if there is such a thing. But what you do is you take the, um, keep the bottom up through it and let it tie on down into its standard figure eight form, which it doesn't really appear to be doing here. Um, and then you take that extra slip, run over it, and you're left with a, a figure eight with two loops on the end instead of one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that, place it right here around the tree. I probably should have, if I'm smart, I would have started my hammock higher up, so I'm going to restart here. Like I said, this is all, this is the first time I've ever tried this with the actual hammock, so be patient with me. I'll try to edit the video as best I can if I even end up posting it. So either way, I got this up high, come around it, loop it on in here, come around. I'm holding the rope with my teeth. Take it and come uh, back around the other direction. I just wanted to get that tail out of the way. And I think I'm going to do this, uh, I don't know, maybe four or five times just to make sure that my hammock isn't going to slip down too far when I finally do. Um, do we decide to loop it up? Then for the last one, when you take it around, um, instead of going over the top, you're going to go underneath the last loop you did, which I'm going to do right here. Okay. And after I get this through, I'm going to switch to the other video, uh, or to the other tree and do the same thing, but I'm going to stop the video so that you don't have too much to go through. Got my carabiners here, and that double loop I showed you how to make. I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna hook it on there. That's a lie. Okay, my bad. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run the uh, extra loop, extra amount of line I've got through my carabiner. You can really do this in any order you want. I'm uh, already deciding that I just did it in a bad order, and I also found that my paracord has picked up a stick for me to play with. Right, so. Once you have the cord running through your carabiner, hopefully you can see that, you're going to actually run that cord uh, back up through. I don't know what I'm hooked on now, fucking plant. I like to keep a lot of cords so that I have room to fix my mistakes. And um, just in case I need it for anything else, if ever, you know, worst case scenario, I did have to rappel down something. I at least have somewhat more length. All right, then basically all this does is it just creates a pulley system for you. I can use this to tighten my hammock up. I'm just gonna tie it to about here for now. And um, uh, I'm just gonna put a little uh, a little slip in it right here. Because uh, until I get the other end tied, I really don't know how tight or loose I need this. I just want it to somewhat hold. So that'll do for there. Um, then. Uh, yeah, this is how you get your stuff all dirty and have to clean it all out later. Gotta love that. Jesus, stick just won't leave my paracord alone. Alright. So yeah, I'll deal with that end later. I'll bring this end over here. Let me find my other carabiner. Uh, of course, you know, since I did this so quickly, my hammock's probably going to be tangled and all mixed up, but I'll deal with it later. So yeah, we're going to go ahead and hook this guy in here. Uh, and then we're going to bring this through. Now this end, uh, I actually have a bit more confidence in, so I may go ahead and loop this end up uh, like it's going to be permanent. And we'll see how I decide to do that. I haven't entirely decided yet. And this is why you want to tuck this piece away so it's not, it's not in your way complicating things. Okay, so I'm just actually going to pull that, you know, 
I guess we'll go with right there. And the trick you can do is you can actually just pinch right here, and that normally holds uh, unless you're under some sort of really, really great load. Uh, I'm going to take this through the reverse direction this time, kind of like you would in a figure eight. Uh, I don't know what you call this knot. This is not any kind of like a, a great professional knot, and I'm not even sure if it's entirely safe or not. But, uh, you know, there's only one real way to learn, right? And at least I'm, uh, at least I'm going to be in a hammock not far off the ground and not far from medical attention if somehow I was to get seriously hurt falling out of a hammock. Yeah, I know how that sounds. It sounds the same way to me, too. Ridiculous. Anyways, um, so this is my slip. So when I'm done, I can just pull the opposite side, and this whole thing should come down. But in order to be safe, I'm actually going to shrink my slip so that the line can't get out, and I'm going to pull the line through. So if it does slip before I mean for it to, this is, acts as kind of a safety, and it'll slip, um, it'll slip just the distance that's left here. Like that instead of uh, all the way to the ground. So now that I've got that up, you can see it's kind of uneven. Maybe you can see, maybe you can't. I can. Never comes to you on the camera like you wanted to, does it? Um, so now I'm going to tighten this side up. I'm just going to go ahead, and here's an example of how the slip works. I just pull the loose end, not the loop end. Boom, and it's undone. All right, so now I'm going to actually use this pulley. Uh, I'm going to take the carabiner off for a second because my line is twisted, and I'd rather it not be. All right, and then we'll put the carabiner back on. So, I don't know if you can see or not. We'll try it from a different angle. Here's my little pulley system. So as I pull this rope, the hammock goes up, 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 right? Cool, and I'm, I'm mounting this very high because I expect the paracord to stretch and uh, just in case my knots slip down or, this is basically just from experience. Uh, I found that hammocks typically do not stay at the height I hang them. Maybe they stay at the height you hang them. They don't stay at the height that I hang them, so. And again, we're going to do this kind of reverse back through knot, if you can even call it a knot. Um, so yeah, let's figure out how I tighten this, huh? Something like that. Okay. And then again, um, I'm going to take all this standing end, and this time is a shortcut. So I'm kind of out here dealing with it more. I'm just going to go ahead and loop it through. Uh, my loop. This is the safety thing I was creating again. And I'll go over this in slow-mo in other videos if people end up liking this one or if I just feel like doing it. And I'm going to pull my slip uh, a little bit further through so that if it does slip, it doesn't fall as far. Okay, and that should be how you hang a hammock. Um, uh, I fall out of it, fall on the ground, onto that rock and some of these sticks. Which should be comedic, but I'll probably be too embarrassed and throw it out. I'm just turning this upside down for a second here to kind of get all the wood shavings that just got in and out. I'm going to turn it back over. Um, I'm also careful to look at these lines. It doesn't cause too much of a problem, I wouldn't guess, but I want to make sure they're not getting tangled or twisted. Um, so now we're just going to slowly start uh, putting our weight down here. I'm listening for the paracord to stretch and to slip. And I'm just going to lean back into it. And it looks like the knot is good. That side doesn't seem to be slipping too much. Neither does that side. I'm relaxed. This seems good. The other side. Let me see how tight or loose this is. I'm gonna undo the little factory ties here. Alright, pretty. Okay. So yes, it's readily apparent to me that um, this is uh, this is not going to work. What I can do though is um, I'm looking at this button and I'm thinking about running some line through it maybe, or maybe what I could do is. Uh, Looking for solutions. Whatever I come up with on this side, I'll go back to the other side and fix. And this actually may be long enough that I can um, I can take it through here, almost like its own ridge line. Yeah, it should be long enough, and I attach it to the other one. So we'll do that up high, 
um, an attempt to get to get somewhere. So we'll see what happens. And do this all the way across. Also, I've If I do end up putting this stuff in the video, I hope you all can appreciate how much work I have to go through editing out all this BS. Watching every last second of it, which I do for YouTube. Watch every last second of everything I record. And uh, see if there's any little nuggets of information I dropped along the way that might be useful. Uh, to make sure that I do not edit them out. And oh, what a costly process it can be. Hmm. Well, I'm starting to get another idea, but I'm now deciding against it. So this, you know, and this is this is how you learn by trial and error. I'm not taking wilderness courses. I'm not being taught. I'm not here with my dad or my uncle or, you know, freaking Travis Haley or somebody. All of this, I'm teaching myself. I'm figuring out by trial and error. So I spent all that time tying that little plastic knot. Okay, it's wasted because I've now come up with this plan. Is this plan going to work? Hmm, probably not. It's going to fail. That's how you learn, though. And it's a bunch of failures that start showing you, uh, you know, what works and what doesn't. So you come up with something that works. And when I decide to go and camp for real, uh, this is just a day trip, by the way. I'm not, um, I'm not going to be sleeping out here. When I do decide to go camp for real, I'm, um, I'm able to set this up quickly. And this gives me some decent practice at problem solving. You know, you're, uh... <coughs> Something pops up in the field, who knows, maybe a piece of your gear breaks, maybe you're met with a situation you're not ready with. At least problem solving is something you're used to. You're used to figuring out how to do things. Um, now I know that like in field expedient conditions, you don't have the time for trial and error, but the more trial and error you do, the closer your trials become and the farther your errors become, if that makes sense. All right, so. Speaking of trial and error, let's go ahead and make some errors, huh? How does that sound? Alright. Cool, so we're going to pull that along there. And that's going to go there. Alright, so... What I'm going to try to do here is... Um, maybe tie another prusik on it? It would be hard to say. What are some adjustable knots I could tie? Hmm. Let us think. All right, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna tie a, a bow line over here, and then I'm gonna tie some sort of adjustable prusik on the left-hand side. Uh, so for my bow line, we're gonna do this real simple here. We're gonna just uh, do the loop. Uh, Big Daddy style, right? Loop, swoop, and pull. Loop, swoop, and pull. Uh, I'm not gonna put too much security on this because number one, uh, this is still experimental. Number two, I'm not sleeping here, like I said before. So um, there's no real reason for this to have a bunch of security on it. And number three, probably one of the best reasons. Um, how, how did I lose number three? Oh, it's just, uh, it's just holding up a tarp. So it's not like if this falls, it's going to injure me, hurt me, kill me. Yada, 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 right? So um, it's just not, not that big of a deal. It's not something that needs to be worried about. Actually, you know what, given that, I'm not even gonna bother tying a prusik knot. I'm just going to tie a taut line hitch. So, I come around there once, uh, twice, and then go over it, and um, yeah, you know what, screw it, we are going to tie a prosthetic just because I just learned that knot and I need to get more experience tying it, seeing what does and does not work. All right. That goes, and then here we're gonna go with it right here. Yeah, it's not not dressing very well, but whose fault is that? Uh, 
It's the jackass who's tied its fault, which in this case is me. Right? Okay. So, cool. Now that I've got this here, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to try to cinch it on up. Just going to put it up there higher where it's not going to bother me as much. Then we're going to come over here and we're actually going to do the same thing. We're just going to try to put it, just going to try to slide it up a little ways. Right? Oh, but look how it sags, right? How terrible. Now we're going to attempt to use our uh, Prusik to slide on through this and tighten it up so that I can use it. Okay. Good. It's not a, actually not looking as terrible as I thought it might. Because let me tell you, I was expecting it to look pretty terrible. Okay, so we do actually have both ends of the tent sitting there. Tarp. It's a tarp, not a tent. I keep calling it a tent because I'm dumb. Now, let's see. Um, because always respect the fact that there are people out there who are, if not experts, much, much, much better at what they do than you do. So always be, um, at least in my opinion, for, for life, always be uh, slow to give advice and quick to take it. If somebody wants your advice or wants your help, they'll ask. If you know them and you know that they're too proud to ask, then feel free to offer advice. But, you know, for instance, if you don't, you know, if you were to come across somebody like me out here and you see that they're doing just a pitiful job and you're like, wow, man, that guy is, that guy is bad. Um, maybe they're doing something like me, you know? Maybe they don't want your advice. Um, I've been shooting with girls several times and um, before, like, before we could even start shooting, some of them were brand new and some of them were actually pretty good shooters. Uh, either way, immediately, like, there's always some, some guy out there that sees they're a girl and uh, it's kind of rude to me too, actually, but I don't mind it as much. Um, they always go over to her and start giving her advice on how to shoot. And she's like, well, what, I need advice just because I'm a girl? And I have to tell her, I mean, honestly, yes, that's why they're giving you advice. But, you know, no, you don't necessarily need advice. This was how I was thinking these work. I think the plastic kind of squares it off and then you can loop around it or something. I don't really know. We're going to see how that works. That's also assuming uh, that I can even find an area to sink this stake into. I think this is all just moss on a rock. Yeah, I've already hit a rock, but maybe if we can... Put it in at enough of an angle. I'm gonna use a stick to drive the stake. Okay, let's see what that does. Uh, then we're gonna grab another plastic piece and another stake over here. Now they say that uh, in this diamond configuration it is supposed to cover you from rain. I don't know if I trust that, honestly. I would want to have an actual ridge line and have uh, my tent in a square configuration, I think, if it were raining. But who knows, maybe sometime uh, with enough time, I'll get the chance to uh, let you all know from experience. So here on the end of these, I'm just tying figure eights. Um, they're just a little bit safer than uh, overhand knots. They're known as stopper knots by some people. So uh, that's why I choose to tie that knot. I'm sure an overhand knot works fine, but um, I think, you know, if I can tie the figure eight and it doesn't take me that much longer, really, why not? <laughs> All right, we're going to see here. I'm going to put this one a whole lot farther back. Uh, and then what we'll do, I'm going to use another stick here to drive this. See that spider on the ground? That's why you want to be careful. Uh, when you're in situations like this, I say that not because that was something I already knew, or it was something I already knew. I say that because I forgot, and when I saw the spider scurrying, probably should have been more careful at how I was setting this all up. All right, we're going to try and withdraw this stake, and we're going to try and move it back and give me some more room inside my um, tarp. I'm try and go right here again, and hopefully get this driven far enough. Where's that stick I was using earlier? 
hopefully get this driven far enough in that it doesn't just pull right back up out. All right, cool. Kind of coming together, right? Doesn't look too bad for my very first time. So on this one, while we're kind of at camp, I'm going to go ahead and stick this on in. Um, and you know, if, uh, if you're still watching the video at this point, you must either be very bored or very interested in camping. Um, if you're very interested in camping or if you, uh, if you have anything you want to share with the other people who might be watching this video, leave it in the comments below. You know, we could all stand to gain. Um, people have called me on this before, and it's somewhat the truth. I get kind of pissy if people talk bad to me in, uh, in the comments. So, <clears throat> you know, if you don't want me saying something rude back to you, all you have to do is present it as a, like, you know, just so you know or for your information, rather than presenting it as, oh, you're such a, you know, effing idiot, you should just go kill yourself. Uh, that's the type of thing that's probably going to elicit a negative response from me. I don't mind being taught how to do things. I very much appreciate it. But if you present it, if you, yeah, present it in the light of being a jackass, then I will respond to you as if you are a jackass. I don't know you. I have no way of knowing if you're actually a good guy. And, you know, I just misunderstood how you typed it. So, uh, and I want people to keep coming back to my channel. And I don't feel like I would come to the channel of someone who just, like, didn't care at all if people were completely rude to them. I want some level of self-respect, you know. I think I'm just blabbering at this point to keep uh, keep some amount of content in the video while I'm stringing these up. Now see here, uh, it was poor planning on my part. There's this tree. I saw this when I was over there, but I was still blabbering about whatever else I was talking about. There's a tree in the way, so I may not actually be able to pull this as taut as I would like. Um, what I may do is I might go to an, alter an alternate hook right here, pull this back in a way, and uh, just let that part hang. I don't know. We'll see if I can get the full effect or not. Uh, I'm just guessing, though, from the way this tree looks, that that's not going to happen, that I'm going to get stuck right there, which I did. So now I actually... Uh, after announcing my plan to use the middle hook, or whatever you call that, middle loop, I'm a little concerned that uh, the stakes may not reach the ground with it as far as I would want them to. So I may switch this into a, a single stake configuration instead of a double. So Let's see, it's, it's pretty windy today. I think it may rain later, um, which is definitely not my plan, because if it does rain later, I'm... Like I said, I'm not camping, so I'm going to have a really hard time uh, packing all this up in the rain. Okay, so what if I were to just go single point on this? Okay, we're going to figure something out real quick. I'm going to loop this out. And I'm going to see if this is a, enough of an angle where I could uh, just pull it past this way. Even if I could just pull it to right there, I think I'd be okay with it. Or right there. So that'll be fine. Now what I'm looking at is if there's an easier way for me to, um, to lock this in without having to untie anything. I really uh, would like to not have to tie anything more than I have to already. I'm going to try to just loop it around the knot I've already got and then kind of let it cinch up and hope that the knot itself uh, will lock it in. Something like that. Problem is I'm a dummy and I did it before I had looped it through the thing. Not that you know what, know what thing I'm referring to. I mean the loop here. All right. Okay, so I'm gonna put this through the loop. Maybe. Yes. Actually, that makes me think I've got another option. Maybe I'll just turn this into a gigantic bow line. How do I tie a bow line? Why am I forgetting this? Boom. All right. But it's upside down, so I'd rather do it this way. 
goes there, then here, then here, like this. Oh yeah, there we go. Again, uh, I would be putting a little bit more thought and effort into this if I intended on staying the night. But as I do not intend on staying the night, I do not intend on putting any more thought or plan into this. Though it probably should have, because I'm now seeing that this is going to be too long. And it's going to drag my tarp into that um, tree. Why is that an issue, you ask? Well, if the wind is blowing, uh, I don't want... Um, I don't want my tarp, tarp scraping against it, you know, p potentially damaging the tarp or just, you know, starting a little bit of weakness that will later turn into a hole or anything like that. Also, what I want to do uh, is in my head, kind of as I was looking at that, I decided this is a good chance to see what it would be like if I were to tie it from the middle here. So I can see if in the future that's something uh, I would ever want to do or if that's something that I really don't care for. So again going to try to tie my little upside down bow line. Um, since I haven't posted my knot videos like I intended to, um, I will clarify that most people call what I'm calling a bow line a bow line, but I don't really believe in that because there's a different uh, knot I tie called the bowstring loop, and I don't want to get the bowstring loop mixed up with the bow line. And I call it the bow line because I'm I'm pretty sure, from my understanding, it was initially used on ships. So I can only assume that, you know, that on a ship they were using a bow and not a bow. Um, a little spider earlier, my spider friend earlier taught me I should probably be looking at this closer before I just stick my hands down in it. I'm going to use a stick to save the backs of my fingers try to drive this stake into whatever it is that's down here, which may or may not be strong enough to hold it. With that, I'm going to call my tarp uh, prepared. I'm going to take a step back. So we can kind of look at this. So, nothing glamorous or glorious about it, right? It's pretty, uh, pretty average. But, um, if, you know, for whatever reason I had to bug out, or if I had to, um, had to survive. I think I could do worse. I could definitely do better, but I think I could do worse. Also, you know, when I'm looking at this, I didn't have to cinch this down, but I still probably should have run, run this loop on the loop so it's not flapping around the way it is. So, this is why you do things like this, lesson learned. I'm gonna put my um, little Glock book down here. Save that rubber piece. We pack out what we pack in, right guys? Put my Glock book over here in my little pouch so I can get to it once I'm in the hammock. And after I turn this camera off, ooh, look at that. I'm guessing that's deer pellets. It's poop. Um, which actually makes sense because when I came up here I scared a deer off. <sighs> but that lets you know there is wildlife in the area. Something to be conscious of if you are going to spend the night. Um, you know, what kind of scat is that? And is that something you want to stay near? Is this a zone that predators may be in? Etc. Etc. So, I like to spread my hammock out as I'm sitting in it so that I'm not pulling on things unfairly. Now we're going to kick over and uh, kind of kind of give you a view of what it's like here in the hammock. Um, so the cool thing about this setup is that I'm deciding but my head side is a lot higher than my foot side. And I want my sides to be even. So the cool thing is, I can either loosen that and or tighten this. Because I like to be high off the ground, I find it fun. Um, yeah, because I am goofy like that. I would rather, um, I'd rather fix this side. I'd rather just pull my feet up a ways. So when I get through all of my extra length of, of paracord that is once again tangled in sticks, I'm just going to go ahead and pull that on out. 
out of my safety there and I'm gonna pull my safety now so even after it's been under a load that's all I have to do and it's untied so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cinch this up a ways probably up to about there what you gotta remember is you're gonna lose some of this knot um, You're gonna lose some of this knot to stretching, right? The paracord's gonna stretch. Your knot's not gonna be the exact size and place you want it. There are variables, so you leave a little bit of wiggle room. Uh, this setup worked so well that I may, um, I may have actually just put this up too high and may be unable to get in it. We'll have to see. If that's the case, um, I always do have the option of either lowering it or bringing over a rock or stump or something to help me get in. Um, it's no problem to get out of a hammock, I would assume. You just kind of roll over and fall. So don't worry about the getting out as much as the getting in. See how much it just gave? It's still, uh, still enough for me to get into. I'm just going to kind of let my weight sink into it, let it roll. This is better. This is the life. I'm excited about my first success. My feet look uber goopy, uber goofy, not goopy. Um, and you know, I may just kick my shoes off and uh, and read.